As you all know, the Dakar is by far the planet's toughest and most grueling race. And every year, the South African contingent leaving our mark on the event gets bigger and bigger. And with so much to discuss, it was impossible to cover it all in one week. So we are back this week with more behind-the-scenes stories from South America. Last week, we heard from our own Dakar legend, Janiel de Villiers, who once again claimed a podium result, as well as from the Nissan guys, who enjoyed a very successful event by getting all three of their cars to the finish. But the Dakar is very much a French event. The idea of taking on such a crazy adventure was conceived by Frenchman Thierry Sabine back in 1979. And in the many years since, the French have played a huge role both in organizing one of the biggest events in the world as well as successfully competing in it. So with us in studio, we have Francis Hani, the Managing Director of Persia Citroen South Africa who obviously speaks a lot of French, and we have Stuart Thompson from Thompson Racing, who I don't think speaks a lot of French, but welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank Francis, you. if I can start with you. Um, obviously, Peugeot worldwide has a very, very proud and rich heritage as far as motorsport is concerned. So just give us a bit of background on, on, on Peugeot's accomplishments over the years. Yeah, I think everybody will remember uh, the late 80s, early 90s with uh, Dakar, the real Dakar at that stage, uh, uh, in Africa with, with uh, 205, uh, uh, turbo 16 uh, grand rate and also the 405 turbo 16 grand rate at the same time we had a lot of successes with uh, rally uh, champion world championship rally we with Vatanen guys like Vatanen Kankunen even other guys in the Dakar with X uh, some of you will certainly remember the a big story in the in the last or uh, the, the last uh, rally, um, Dakar we participated that two of our cars were leading in a couple of seconds and it was a, a toss that decided who won, who won <coughs> win the race on the, on the beaches of Dakar. So it was between X and Vatan at that stage and Vatan and he won the toss. Okay, so, so that, that's <laughs> Dakar. We all know that World Rally Championship, the WRC yeah. Persia have won and dominated for many years. Uh, recently you guys took on Pikes Peak and dominated. So I think the message is that when Persia decides to take on something like this, they do it properly. Yeah, look, and, and the message behind also, when we are, when we are involved heavily in, 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 in rally and, and ground raid like the Dakar, it's also linked to uh, commercial successes. And I think that's the aim, the, to go back to Pikes Peak first with 208 last year, or two years ago, and, and this year to, to Dakar with the 208. Francis, I think we'll get back to, to Peugeot's re return to Dakar just in a second. Stuart, no stranger to South African motorsport, you obviously are obviously responsible for preparing the, uh, the car from Mark Lanier who's mm -hmm. won two consecutive South African Rally Championships, but this was your first Dakar. Yeah, Hannes, indeed it was. And it, uh, we, got, we got the call fairly late. So it, there was a lot of midnight oil, a lot of, uh, a lot of sort of commitment needed you to get the You got the call cars. from who? Just put us in the picture here. You got the call from who and what did you have to do on this event? It's actually quite a nice story because the call came pretty much on the recommendation of Glen Hall. Obviously, we compete against Glen locally and we were very much involved in the development and design of the Nissan that the, the guys spoke about last week. And, you know, due to the, the level at which the Nissan was competing, Glynn had an inquiry for a, a Renault Duster. Um, or not an inquiry, he, was, he had an inquiry as to who could build a Renault Duster in the time frame available. And he very kindly uh, steered Renault in our direction. Okay, so we had, we had Peugeot and Renault at this year's DACO. Mm. Francis, back to you. It's a huge team that, uh, that the French have come up with. I mean, they've got a star driver lineup. Maybe you can just tell, who, tell us who the drivers are and why are they so famous? Yeah, look, first of all, we, we brought a lot of experience, eh, not only in motorcars, but we, with Peter Ansel, with uh, Jules, Jules Dupre, mm -hmm. and especially with Carlos Sainz. You bring three guys that with a, a huge experience in the Dakar and, and in rally racing. So um, I think that uh, if you bring those guys, uh, you have two targets. First of all, you're going to win. Because with those guys, I don't think if you tell them and you, you make them sign a contract and you say, yeah, we go to try and to see what's happening. No, those guys, they want to win. They are winners. Uh, they showed it in the past. And second, also, if you go for the first time back to the Dakar, you know that uh, with the new project that, yeah, it will be tough to win. But the target is to win. Uh, and, and with those guys, you get a lot of experience. They get a lot of um, technical uh, experience that they, they give, that they add to the project and that you can use in the next, in the next year and years uh, to go further in, in, in the Dakar. Students, obviously these guys, you know, they, they come from a different world, I should say. You, small team based here in Midrand, uh, but, I mean, lots of expertise. You, you went there with what objective? Probably not to win, but w what did you guys want to get out of this? 
I think that our objective was um, a solid top 20 finish, which we didn't quite achieve. But what we did achieve was some very good stage times. And as you say, you know, we're a fairly small focused team. Our, um, our designer engineer is a guy called Achim Bergman, who's a, a real talent. I think, you know, he's been involved in, in a lot of design and development in South Africa. And the team in Argentina is also a fairly compact unit. You know, they are funded by Renault Argentina. Their superstar driver is a guy called Emi Spataro, who is really a, a local hero. You know, the almost mm -hmm. fanatical levels of worship that the, the fans give him. It, uh, it was quite something to be involved with that. And when you got there with a new car and you've got this Argentinian vibe going on around you, uh, how did you take it all in? Was it what you expected? It's, it's, they're a very patriotic people, and it's, it was quite difficult to almost to gain credibility amongst them. But I think that it worked quite well, and um, I think that fairly, sh fairly, sh you know, fairly soon after arriving, we established some sort of mutual respect, and it, it actually worked very, very well. We'll get back to Francis now. I just want to find out from you: was it as tough as uh, as you thought it was going to be? You know, Hannes, it is tough, but it's. You know, while you're involved in it, you just sort of keep your head down and, and do what you have to do. It's obviously by nature quite tough because, in essence, you, you drive all day and work all night. But, you know, it gets to the point where you manage. And um, I think with proper planning and, and the right sort of sharing of duties, it's, it's certainly manageable and certainly something we'd want to do again. So it's. it's oh, well, that uh, says a lot if you want to go again. Sure. Yeah. Speaking of people who want to go again, I mean, Peugeot did not quite fulfill the. Uh, the objectives this time around with winning, so sure it's a long term. How long is the, 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 the plan? Is it five years, three years? No, it's, it's, it's more than, 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 than two year plan. Let's say it will be, I will be there for three, four, five years, which we, we tell maybe longer. That's, that's not uh, defined yet, but uh, we will certainly be there next year and, and year after. And, and next year started already for us. Uh, uh, the, the Dakar uh, ended on a Sunday, and I think uh, we got one week. The guys got one week off, and the next uh, Monday they were working back and looking how to improve and, and working on, on the next year. So the Dakar 2016 already started for us. Let's just quickly talk about the car. I mean, we all saw pictures of the car. It's a beautiful looking car, huge wheels, but it is, uh, the, the Persia guys went for a different strategy by going the two-wheel drive route instead of the four-wheel drive route? Yeah, look, there are different uh, ways when you go as a, a newcomer into a, a, a such important race as a Dakar, you have to see also a little bit ahead what's, what's happening. And first of all, rules are changing. And I think, uh, and Stuart confirmed it just before, before, the, uh, before this uh, meeting, uh, he confirmed that, yeah, the rules are changing, that the future will probably be two-wheel cars, mm -hmm. uh, two-wheel two, uh, drive cars. So that's, that's, that's the future, first of all. Second of all, for us, uh, it gives us some advantages compared to a four-wheel drive. You can, as you mentioned, bigger wheels. Uh, that car can go vertical on, on a wall eh? with, with, uh, without a four-wheel uh, four drive. So, and you have also the advantage for us, what's very important, is to link it to the, the real, the commercialized 2008. Because we don't have it in a four-wheel drive, it's a two-wheel drive. So, and that's also the link with the two-wheel drive and, and the choice of the two-wheel drive for the Dakar. And what did you hear from the guys in France? Were they disappointed by this year's result? I mean, we all know you don't rock up at, at the Dakar and just win straight no, up. They weren't disappointed. The, maybe the, the, the only thing what was missing, and, and that's also the strength of a, a two-wheel drive today, is in the smaller races, more WRC stages in, in, in the Dakar. So we were, not, we were fighting twice, three times for a stage for win. Stage wins, but yeah. we didn't get it. And I think the only disappointment problem is coming from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you think that's still the play? I mean, we've, we've seen it with Nanny Roma and uh, some of the other guys, yeah. St Stefan Pedansel himself. They were all bikers who turned into, you know, changed into to becoming really, really good drivers. Obviously, because they know the environment, they can read the dunes. The same is what I'm thinking Peugeot is hoping to come from Cyril. Is, is, is that the reason? Yeah, that's the reason. Eh? Cyril was, yeah, he, after five wins, he, he wanted some new uh, uh, challenges. And I think going from a bike to a car is one of them. And of course, with the experience he has in the first year, it's not, it's not the same. I, I, I don't know, but I suppose it's completely different coming from a bike than, and then going in a car. So Freemans was also a, a learning process that first year. And I think next year, he will be very close to, to, to the podium. And Stuart, from a Renault side, you, did Renault give you any con uh, confirmation that they want to be back in there next year again? Yes, yeah, for sure. We, we're going to be involved next year. We're busy with an evolution of the car, which we obviously hope will be better. And very much keen on, on, on building our relationship and Quick question, how much of the car year. is really Renault? 
Um, it looks like a Renault harness, <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> well, the <laughs> minis look like minis too, <laughs> so that's a very good point yeah. you make. Tell us something that happened behind the scenes that uh, I asked the Nissan guys last week the same question. What, what did people not see when they watched TV? It's a massive adventure. So you're on the road all day, there, you know, there's, there's lots of going on. And as you can imagine as well, in a, in a bivouac of 5,000 plus people, there's always something on the go. So, um, yeah, lots of stories. A lot of them have to, I suppose, stay, stay buttoned up. But um, it's, uh, there's lots of camaraderie, um, you know, lots of adventures. There's a little bit of tragedy, and it's, it's, it's just a, it's probably one of the last real adventures around. Well, speaking of the real adventure, as I said earlier, it was a Frenchman who, who came up with the whole idea. Francis, how big is the Dakar for Frenchmen and in France? How big is this event, two French people? Yeah, it's, it's big, but I don't, I don't think it's, uh, it's, the, it's, it's bigger in China, for instance. It's bigger in Latin America. Since it moved from Africa to Latin America, it's very big. It's still big in Europe and especially in France. But, but yeah, and of course, uh, French people are proud that it's organized by a French, uh, French company. That's for sure. That's, that's, uh, but also for us as a, as a global brand and more and more global brand, it's important to be involved in that global event, what the Dakar is. We wish Persia luck for next year. Stuart, the same to you. I hope you go there with more success in 2016. So we will be back in just a few minutes with the guys who took on the Dakar on quads and bikes. Don't go anywhere.